let's go to a client and see if we can connect to our FTP site. Okay, on my um, laptop now, not on my server, I'm on my laptop right now, I've opened up FileZilla, all right, you can see it here, and you can see that it's going off screen. Um, I'm going to type in the host name, Mount Zion.com, right? I'm going to type in the username, and this is interesting. I'm going to type in Mount Zion.com and then a pipe and then web admin, okay? Then the password, right? And then I will hit quick connect, all right? And you can see here, connecting to establish the welcome message, FTP server, okay, valid host name is expected, all right, it looks like we connected, but then we get an error message that says, could not connect to server, right? So we connected, kind of, um, but we did not actually see the files that we needed to see over here on the remote server. So we're going to need to troubleshoot that. Okay. Valid host name is expected. Okay. Okay. Since we don't have SSL functioning yet, we're not using secure socket layer, what we can do is try this Mount Zion. Dot com and these settings are important this time let's just put in web admin instead of Mount Zion.com pipe web admin and then the password and try to connect and you can see here that the connection worked and we're able to connect to our home directory using FileZilla FTP client this is the free FTP client that you can download um, from FileZilla, the uh, FileZilla client, right? Not the server, the client. And you can see here that um, the connection was successful. I'm going to stretch this and you can look at some of the processes that happened. Okay. Super. All right, so we were able to get a connection. So we were able to FTP to our default website. Let's see if we can set the same thing up for our second website um, for the dan.mountzion.com site. So for this one, same thing. We're going to select the site, and then we'll say add FTP publishing, right? And we'll say allow SSL. And when we do use SSL, we're going to use our self-signed certificate, which we created. All right, we'll hit next. And we're going to have basic authentication, and we're going to have a specified user, and the specified user is Dan, and they will have read and write access. All right, and we'll hit finish. All right, and we've got to refresh the home page for the changes to be recognized. We'll click OK. This time, instead of starting and stopping the server, let's see if we can just kind of refresh this here. All right, refresh. All right, nope, that didn't work. Um, how about manage website restart? And does that bring up our FTP? Nope. How about if we click on sites and refresh? And then go to Dan. Yep, there's our FTP. So I right clicked on sites and then hit refresh. And then so now we have the Dan website and we're going to try to set up the FTP also for it. All right, we'll take a quick look here. We'll go down once again to FTP site. We'll start it, All right? Okay, and th this is interesting. Notice there's a start button here. We want to start it. It's, it's stopped right now. Um, so we have to do some settings to get this one to work. Let's see here, we'll go to FTP authentication right I notice I've got Dan selected here now right basic authentication is enabled let's edit it and let's set the default domain to Dan dot 
mountzion.com. Okay, click that. That sounds good. All right, we'll go back. Authorization rules. We have the right user authorized. All right. Um, directory browsing. Double click on that. MS DOS style. That's fine. We don't want Unix style. Firewall support. We'll put in our IP address. This would be our public IP address. If this was a public web server, we'd want our public router's IP address here. All right, we'll click Apply. All right, and I'll go back. Um, FTP messages, if we want some, we can set them here. Banner, hello, Dan's. FTP, apply, howdy, apply, bye, apply. Okay, that's fine. Um, go back here. We don't really need that. FTP SSL settings. We're allowing it. We're not requiring it yet. We're going to add that later. All right. And then FTP user isolation. What we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to isolate the user not to the FTP root directory but to the username physical directory right here username physical directory all right and we'll hit apply so we'll set up FTP user isolation and we'll go back we're going to look at our bindings here let's click on bindings once again I've got Dan selected I'm going to click on bindings and I'm going to highlight FTP here. I'm going to edit it and I'm going to put my host name into the binding on port 21. So I'll say dan.mountzion.com. Click OK. All right, that looks good. And close. That's important. And now we should have no problem starting up our FTP server. So at Manage FTP Site, we'll hit Start, and you notice now it started, right? It didn't start before because we needed to set our bindings to our different domain name, dan.mountzion.com, not nothing which would default to mountzion.com. We already have a mountzion.com listening on port 21, right? This is a different domain name that we need binding to port 21. All right. So that looks pretty good, right? So now, let's see if we can connect to it from our FTP client. So from our FTP client, what we'll do is we'll close that out. We'll say dan.mountzion.com, username dan, put in the password. and hit connect and we get a message that says password required for Dan user cannot log in home directory inaccessible now this can drive you crazy when this happens so to bypass that what I'm gonna do is just what I tried to do last time I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say Dan dot mount Zion dot com pipe symbol to the user Dan. So I put in my full subdomain name here, pipe to Dan, and hit connect. And we should be connecting now. User cannot log in. Okay, we're not getting it, so we got to troubleshoot this. Okay, in order to get the Dan website, which is dan.mountzion.com, we're going to need to change a few of the configurations. Okay, um, I'm going to go down here, and one of the main things I'm going to do is I've had trouble getting this isolate users to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to just the FTP root directory, and then see what happens. All right, so we'll hit yes to that, right, and then um, then we'll go back. All right, I'll go here and I'll restart the FTP server. Okay, I'll double check my advanced settings to make sure that 
everything is pointing to the correct place everything looks good all right and I'll check my bindings notice my bindings on FTP is here so now what we have to do is test it out 